And Sasi with the hip escape gets to his feet. 133 to go. Now, not only is Jardine's mouth open, his hands are down as well. Buying time. Keith Jardine may be ready to go. Musasi outlanding Jardine 12 to 7 in power strikes. 27 to 43 thus far compared to Jardine's 18 of 50. Jardine blinking. Is it blood in the eye? Beginning to wear that crimson mask. Right hand, body kick. Musasi. Musasi had a beautiful punch kick combination to end it with a left hook right to the gut of Jardine. And he went right for the takedown in retaliation. When you take into account the respective ages, the fact that Jardine took this fight on short notice, sure he's successful with the takedowns, hasn't been really able to do much with it. And the longer this fight goes, the more it favors the younger, fresher Musasi. That's why it's good to be 25. What kind of impact, Frank, do those little punches on your back have on your opponent? They all just continue to wear you down. They distract you, they make you forget about what you're doing, and they slowly wear you down. Both fighters, bloody. Blood coming out of the face of Keith Jardine. The eyes, the mouth, the nose, and Keith Jardine's blood on the torso of Gegard Musasi. In favor of Musasi in terms of total power strikes landed, Frank. And after two rounds, do you have the former champion ahead? I got the former champion ahead. Uh, just dangerous striking here. Both measuring, both waiting. But Musashi getting the better on the timing and on the counter striking. Jardine is just getting, he's getting loose and he's getting sloppy when he throws those punches out there. This was, this was a really nice takedown. Jardine on two knees, but not really lifting and driving until there. And he, hey, he ripped it to the ground, but how much energy did that take for him to get down there? And then once he was there, Musashi didn't really let him rest. He butterfly guard up, pushed him away, and just kept those short punches going. Those are the ones that make you tired. And here he goes, windshield wiper. Hey, everything Great works, trade especially, when, especially when you're hurting your opponent. Musashi outlanding Jardine, 50 to 11, and power strikes landed. After two rounds, and that's the question, though, Frank. That, as we get through a round here, guys, that opening round, what do you score? The takedowns of Jardine or the strikes of Musasi? Or the lost point on the first and round. And that was a free, exactly. Yeah. Could have been an, an even round then. Round three. The third and final round. Light heavyweights in the cage. Keith Jardine in green. Musashi was stepping in for some finishing power punches. So Jardine taking a shot to the peninsula south of the equator. Another stoppage here in this fight. It's not bad enough that he's getting beaten up in the stand-up department. Okay. That's injury to insult right there. Accidental. You ready to fight? You ready to fight? Hold on, let's go. Mike Beltran starts him again. Here's another interesting stat of the six takedowns by Jardine. He was only able to land two strikes total. After the takedown? After the takedown. That's not good. And now from the southpaw position. I like that leg kick that Jardine's throwing, but he's got to go back to it. And he's also got to counter Musasi's leg kick with that right hand. He's trying to discombobulate Musasi by switching stances. Continues to go for the takedown, yet Frank, what, I mean, sure he's been successful, but it's just expending energy and not capitalizing on it. Is this the strategy you'd like to see in the third round of a fight? No, but I don't think he's got another strategy. I think he's losing the stand-up game. He can't get him down. He's kind of caught in uh, no man's land here. Jardine's got to pull something out, and I think maybe it's time to start brawling and go dirty. Tried to utilize some dirty boxing there, Gus. Now Musasi with the takedown. Beautifully tied. I thought he'd start this fight. Yo, Tincho. Big one. Bad one. Jardine fighting, and he breaks out of it. Wow, what a tough man. Crowd here in San Diego loving the action. 
Great submission escape. No one could question the heart. The guile of a Keith Jardine has been in there with some of the world's best fighters, including here in his Strike Force debut against former Strike Force light heavyweight champion Musasi. Now Musasi on top. How dangerous, Frank, is he here? He is very dangerous. He's just like, like wet paper on you. And then with them elbows now, this is just bad, bad positioning for Jardine. Musasi working the cross face. What does Musasi want to do here, gentlemen? I think he wants to create distance, posture up, and rain down those bombs. The ground and pound put an exclamation point at the end of this beating, and now he's moved him to the fence. He mounts. A Jardine experienced cage fighter walking up that cage. Oh, Jardine oh, rolling out of it. Backdoor escape, almost. That's old school right there. The fans obviously behind Keith Jardine here. Keith Jardine deserves so much credit. Not to beat the proverbial dead horse, but again, less than two weeks notice. Left hook, right hand. Now Musasi putting combinations together. Jardine stumbling. Stop time. Mouthpiece. Another uh, wardrobe malfunction there. Mouthpiece falling out of uh, Gegard Musasi's mouth. Referee has called the timeout with two minutes and three seconds left here in the third round. How many stoppages have we had? Quite a few. I don't think the fighters are complaining, though. They've been in a, they've been in a battle here. Stoppage, who does it favor? I think really Jardine. Yeah. He needs the rest and the respite. He needs to really let it all hang out here. Less than two minutes remaining. Oh. Right hand. He's just right on the button by Musasi. Musasi just Another right up. hand. Yeah, he is systematically dismantling the Dean Amin and Gegard Musasi looking very effective with his striking. Jardine looking for that Kimura. He's got the shoulder, but not the wrist grab. He doesn't no, have to, he has had to let it go. A minute 24 remaining. Gegar Musasi on top. Now it's Musasi going shoulder. for it. I think Jardine is just too tough to put away like this. Got to beat him up, beat him up more and soften him up. Try to choke him or something. Musasi has 10 wins via submission, none of them via Kimura. But how about Musasi, guys? Yeah, he's looked really, really impressive in this fight, not taking anything away from Keith Jardine, the fact that it was a short-notice fight. There may be some, though, Frank, the question, should Musasi have been even more aggressive in this fight? You can't take away the medal of Keith Jardine. This has been a very impressive performance by the Armenian assassin. Yeah, Musasi's very technical in his aggression. Oh. <laughs> it's, very, it's very methodical. But Jardine not giving up was almost uh, whipping his legs up there, possibly going for an armbar attempt, but the clock is his biggest enemy right now. Final round. Light heavyweight action. Gegard Musasi and Keith Jardine. Jardine desperately looking here for a submission attempt. Uh-oh. And that's it. Great fight. Till the end. What a job by Keith Jardine. Bloodied. So much heart in yep. the cage for this veteran of many, many wars. Bloodied and battered, but he was not finished. The crowd, some of them on their feet here in San Diego, applauding the efforts of both men and for Gegard Musasi Frank. Obviously back in the wheelhouse, back in contention for that 205-pound title. I thought it was one of his more complete performances that we've seen. And what a fight. And, and the toughness of Keith Jardine cannot be questioned. Yeah, how, how he survived this combination and knee right here. I mean, ow, come on. Poor Keith Jardine, but what a tough man. Staying in there, mount position. Look at this beautiful cage crawl and escape here, bridging all the way over his right shoulder. That is a big move. Scrambles right up out of it. Jardine was very game this whole time. And I think if he was in better shape and had more preparation, this would have been a really, really tough fight. Not that it wasn't.
but he ate some hands on the outside. He's I really like just the striking of Musashi. Very crisp, very tight, and the difference in style, as you can see, Jardine is very loopy. Musashi just stalking him down with very crisp, very tight punches. Musashi outlanded Jardine 70 to 31 in total arm strikes, according to CompuStrike, 40 to two in wow. total ground strikes landed. So the stats definitely tell the story, and I think a picture there says a thousand words as well as uh, Keith Jardine's face showing the remnants of a battle with Musashi. All right, don't forget Inside NASCAR with new episodes coming your way Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. and an encore presentation coming up later tonight immediately following this Strike Force card. Hey, I'm taking my wife to NASCAR. All right, the final scores have been tabulated. Let's get the official decision from the maestro of the microphone, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Well, it seems to be uh, maybe some confusion in the score totals. Jimmy Lennon Jr. getting uh, set to announce the decision against. There was that point deduction against Musashi in the opening round, but I can't see how he would have lost this fight dominating the last two rounds. The fighters. All right, here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. with the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the scorecards. Here are the judges' totals. Judge at ringside, Luis Cobian, scores about 29 to 27 in favor of Gegard Musasi. <laughs> judges Abe Bellardo and Lester Griffin both scores about 28 28, even a draw. The decision is a majority draw. Here. Well, guys, first of all, what a great fight. You survived an illegal kick, cuts. You have a draw here. How do you feel about it? You know, we're here to win fights. Uh, you know, like the saying, it's like kissing your sister. Man, I got tired. I guess that's what training camp's for, right? Gegard, the point, may have lost, well, may have not won this fight for you. Well, it happened. I didn't do it deliberately. In the heat, I did it, and I apologize. Keith is an amazing fighter, and I want to thank him for taking the fight. And it wasn't the best performance, but he did a good show, I hope. And the fans like it, I hope. All right, thank you very much, gentlemen. A draw, let's go back to cage side. Frank, uh, I'm again speechless. With all due respect to Keith Jardine, there was no way he won that fight. As we go to the compu strike, and I know numbers don't always tell the story, but in this case, they really did, my friend. I mean, they sure seem like it to me. I mean, Jardine got a heck of a lot of takedowns, but past that, he really just got beat up out there. I mean, I don't know how the judges scores. Maybe that half point system we were talking about, maybe needs to come into play here. Well, I know that Ricardo Almeida recently retired from the UFC has become a judge. Carlos Newton's become a judge. We need more fighters to become judges because unfortunately this is getting ridiculous. Well, you know, it's tough because Unless you've been in there, it's really hard to tell what's really going on. That's just the bottom line. Well, Keith Jardine again, nothing against the Dina Mean on short notice, giving it all he got. And as he said, kissing his sister, Gegard Musasi has to be disappointed with the end result. Even with the point deduction, he won this fight. All right, it's time to put that fight to bed, Frank, because we now are getting set for the two world title fights coming our way tonight. It's going to be Nick Diaz, of course, against Paul Semtex Daly. But first up, it is going to be Gilbert Melendez against 